Hi folks, Brian Callan here from Callan Harps. I'm uh, making a wee video here today for uh, International Harp Day. Uh, for my workshop today I'm doing some levering, harp levering, um, which is a, a vital part of the harp making process and for me this is the, the, the final stages. So if you come a little bit closer I'm just going to show you and demonstrate how to put on a lever. So here we have an A lever which needs to go on. So I need to get the exact position for this lever on here. So I need to make sure it's in the note of A. And what I do is I place the lever where I think the semi one is going to be. And that seems to be the position of it here. Here I hold that on here and I mark the center for where the screw is going to go in. So I get my drill and I drill a hole to receive the screw. And then I place the lever in underneath the string and screw that into place. Tighten that, now I need to check and line that up that it sits in perfectly and again check my semitone slightly off so I'm going to adjust the bridge pin in a second but before I do that I'm going to place the second screw in here drilling a pilot hole first which allows the screw to go in without the wood splitting screw that in And we'll check that now. So it's slightly out. If you have a look down here, Mr. Cameraman, if you have a look down at this, you'll see that's an A. So semitone is slightly off. So I need to adjust that with the bridge pin by bringing the bridge pin up or down. So now sharpen it you get your B flat so that's one lever attached fully so we have some already done here so this is a 22 string harp so I'll continue on again the next note is the note of G continuing on ignoring the chicken and we'll get the semi tone for for G again mark in the center and drill in the hole. And screw in that onto the neck of the hand. And check that. So that's the note of G. bang on there. Okay, this is one job or process of the harp that cannot be rushed. If you mess up or flick up on the levers, you're going to be in trouble while playing the harp if it's not holding its tune. Each lever is designed specifically for the harp, so you have the vibration length. The vibration length of the string is from the soundboard right up to the center point of the bridge pin here. So this lever will not suit my 34 string harp. So this is my 32 string student model. So I have a different set of levers for that. They're not universal and they will not um, fit properly on anyone else's harp either. So Kamek designed each lever for each string on my harps. Again, I'm going to put on the EF. So it's critical you get the exact position for the lever. 
any screws. So, and again, fix that into place. And check the semi hole on that. I pop in the string. And that needs to be slightly adjusted. So, again, adjust the bridge pin. I'm not going to uh, show you how to put on all 22 levers, you get the idea after after three. Uh, this takes approximately an hour and a half to two hours to complete and adjust and regulate all the levers. So again, each one has to be done individually. Checked. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the uh, explanation of the levers. And, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello, my name is Fiona McConnell, and today I have my 26 string customized harp that Brian Callan and County Galway made for me. So, I want to play you two pieces for National Heart Day. The first is a slow air called The Fairy Child that I would have learnt as a teenager growing up and then I'm going to follow it by a polka called Seamus Cousins that's from a recent publication for music for the 26 string heart. So I wish everybody happy harping for National Heart Day.
that was Kaylee Bustard playing one of my harps. I'm Mervyn Waugh and I've been making these Termenon Alas for some years now. They've proven very popular. I've been selling a lot of them here in Ireland and many of them overseas as well. Um, however, I've decided the time has come when I should uh, hang up the tools and uh, do my best to retire. Now, I'm not saying I'll never make another harp, but uh, I'm definitely not taking any more orders. And this is probably one of the last alas that I will make. Now, the Terminan name uh, is in good hands. I'm passing it on to the next generation. My son, Brian, is making a range of student harps. There's the Learner 26 and the Learner 34. They're aimed at the serious student who wants a, a quality harp, but at an entry level price. They're a bit simpler in construction than the Alla, but uh, I'll let him tell you about them. I'm Brian. I'm taking over somewhat the Termenon uh, harps from my father, Mervyn. Um, I've just been stringing, I'm in the process of stringing this Learner 34 harp. Um, the, the Learner 34 is principally the same string layout, same string spacing, same strings, uh, fluorocarbon strings as the Ella. Um, it's uh, levered with Camag levers also. The main differences in it are that it's, um, it's a simpler construction in that it's a solid maple harp. Um, it has a straight four post and the soundboard is made from aircraft plywood. Um, it's a, a rectangular um, shaped uh, sound box. Um, it has quite a large, large bass on it. There's a lot of volume from the bottom strings. Um, it's nice and bright in the middle. As well as the Learner 34, I also make uh, a 26 string harp, which um, strangely I call the Learner 26. It's principally the same as the 34, only it has the bottom octave um, isn't there, uh, leaving the top 26 strings. It's um, aimed at children, shorter arms, don't reach as far down the harp and therefore don't reach the bottom strings. It's also particularly favoured by people who are looking for um, a transportable harp, one that will fit easily into luggage compartments perhaps on aircraft and um, that they can take on the bus with them and so on. Some people um, have bought it as far afield as America, um, Shanghai, um, there's, there's har these harps all over the world. Um, and it's it's suited to people that want to have a harp they can carry around with them. They'll bring it maybe to the pub, um, they'll bring it to a friend's house. Um, again, it's um, a plywood uh, soundboard construction. It's solid maple with fluorocarbon strings, again, levered with Camac levers. Levers on each of these harps uh, can be fitted in any combination of, of your choice. Some go for CNF, some BCNF, some go fully levered. Um, so I lever the, the harp in any combination that you desire. As well as my Learner 34 and the Learner 26, uh, I also have a harp kit which we've designed. Uh, it's a 26 string harp in a box. The harp itself is computer cut from birch faced plywood. Um, all the pieces will fit perfectly together as it is computer cut. Everything that you need to make the harp is contained in the box, right down to the glue, the screws, the screwdriver, even the sandpaper. The only thing that you will need to finish the harp is whichever finish that you desire, be that paint or lacquer or whichever. Uh, full instructions come with the harp and um, they're printed, they're inside the box. The instructions also are available on the website and we think the build a harp sounds pretty good. As I say, I've just been putting some strings in this Learner 34 harp. Um, stringing is something that people would often ask me is, you know, how do you tie the, the toggle on the string? Each of the strings has, um, our harps we put a wooden toggle at the back uh, so that it makes nice contact with the, the soundboard. And people often ask, how do you tie the string? 
Uh, it's not particularly difficult, but it's something that people are dying to buy because it's a small toggle, a fine string and so on. So I'm going to show you now how I tie a toggle onto a harp. Now for the purposes of this, this the toggles are, are very small and the strings are very thin, so I'm going to use this, which will probably end up a tuning key or one of my other harps, and this piece of wire. Now, it starts out simply as one loop, which is tied in a half knot or a half granny knot or some people I think call it, like that. Toggle then goes through that loop and pulled, which leaves the tail out one side and half a knot here. This end is then looped over itself to create a loop like that, and then over the toggle and feed the tail through that, that end. And then when that's pulled tight, just position it nicely in the middle of your toggle. When that's pulled tight, that will get tighter as the string pulls, that knot will go nowhere. If you're using it on a very fine string, you can maybe go over again and just loop it one more time, just over the top as you did before, and that'll just give you that extra bit. Not completely necessary, but on a smaller, finer string, it can help in case it would slip. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that all made sense. If anybody has any questions in relation to my harps, uh, please feel free to get in touch. Contact details are available on the websites. in the Kritsche, National Harp Day, and I'm delighted to be here uh, in the presence and company of Ashling Ennis, a uh, renowned harper. My name is Tomás McIlvoid, I'm a harp maker based here in Rotfarnham, directly opposite the Pierce Museum, and up the road from Marley Park. I was very fortunate to learn harp making from the late and very great Colm O'Macher, who worked at the Craft Courtyard in Marley Park there for nearly 40 years, and it's only with his passing I realised the legacy of um, talent, understanding, um, kindness, humanity that he passed on to all the harpers of Ireland and further afield who came to him over 40 years. And I'm probably deeply proud to be able to continue that tradition and to look after some of his work and to make my own work as well. Um, one of the things as a harp maker I learned because like all my musician all my life um, is exploring the potentials of sound, seeking out that sound that um, gives the musician a palette to say what they want to say. And um, it's a journey um, of labor and of pain and tears of time, seeking out the instrument that, that'll give you that. So I've, worked for years in developing my instruments to sort of this is the, the latest incarnation um that Ashley's gonna play for us 
Um, actually, you might say something about Colm as well, because you, you knew him very well. Yeah. You made your first harp, I think. I mean, my, gosh, like, um, my early memories of learning the harp, so many of them are tied up with the courtyard in Marley Park, and um, whatever magic, you know, Colm was working on, on my harp at the time, um, just spending time in that space where there were so many master crafts people, you know, whether it was the leather worker Dave across the yard or just kind of being in, um, even just being in Cullum's workshop and just seeing the plethora, you know, of instruments in their various sort of stages of development, you know, and um, that it was, it was such a warm and comfortable and creative space and he was always so delighted to see me and mam and it didn't matter what kind of what thing we were coming in with that day or kind of what sort of calamity we were in or what we needed he was always um just more than happy to to help us out and um i think it's it's very true that sometimes it's only it's only on reflection you know that um you know one realizes just how golden a time that was, you know, and how lucky to to have sort of to have fallen into that space with, with that person. So um, I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky um, to have been able to spend those. Yeah, and it's funny because I repair harps as well, and I have streams of people coming to me over mm. the years, and every single person has a lovely, warm yeah. story to come. You know, and for, it's it sort of informed me how I go about it too just to give people that time, that welcome, that space and look at, look at them as well as you can. You yeah. know, it's a, it was a lovely way to do business and you meet some beautiful people in the process. Yeah. Um, so just moving on, I think um, you're going to play something for us now that yeah. sort of explores the full range of potential of the Irish harp. Would yeah. you like to tell me a bit about the piece first? Yeah, so I was, um, I suppose I was, I was trying to think what, you know, what to play. So this is a piece called Natalia and it's by Deborah Henson Collard. And um, I think it just shows off um, this lovely harp that I'm getting to know. Um, I think it shows off the, the scope um, very well. Um, I, 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 love, I love this harp and I think um, it's nice to show what a, <laughs> what a beautiful even tone it has. Um, so it's sort of, <laughs> it's, it's my hand's fault if I, if I can't uh, communicate that. But I think it's, uh, Natalia is just kind of, a, it's, it's, it, it kind of does a bit of everything. So um, you'll get to hear the full range of the instrument. Um, and um, yeah, and it's got, you know, all the dynamics and various different kind of um, extended techniques, couple of harmonics. So I guess if you're looking for something to maybe show um, as much about the harp as you can, I think um, Nataliana is a good choice. I think Deborah um, actually, you know, as a musician herself, um, has done a great deal to sort of to push the harp beyond um, its ex it expectations sure. um, and I'm all for that you know I think um, it's great to embrace um, our traditions you know across the globe you know here in Ireland and, and elsewhere and I think it's also lovely to to wear that tradition like the loose garment that you can kind of cast off from time to time sure. and just you know and I think Deborah is a great um, example of that, so. but, but also it just shows potential the Irish Libra harp can stand tall in any genre of music internationally. Yeah. I think that's a, an important sort of message for our national yeah. harp that our harp as an international instrument is literally limitless. Yeah, and it's already everywhere, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> Never rip so.
Well, actually, that was absolutely incredible. Oh. I don't think I've ever heard a piece of music that explored the harp in one piece of music and the harmonics and the depth and the dynamics that, you know, that it has to say. So just, thanks very much. Oh. It was a pure, pure treat. <laughs> So just to finish up our contribution for National Heart Day, what are you going to play for us? Um, well, you know, it's funny because we're, we're chatting here and it's making me think about um, all my heart friends. Um, and, uh, of course, I thought of Dervil Finnegan. Um, and this uh, tune always makes me think of Dervil. Um, it's the Deer's March. I think it's just such a happy tune. And... Um, we might all be a little bit sad after it's all gone, so I thought maybe we need a, um, a bit of a break from that. So this is the Deer's March, and um, yeah, a shout out to Derval and um, to Kim and to lots of lovely heart friends. I hope you're enjoying National Heart Day wherever you are. So here we go, Deer's Bridge. March.